and hello welcome back to our video on turbulence modeling we'll continue our discussion on large eddy simulation the dynamic smart Gorinsky model and in the last video uh, we are talking about uh, the first round of filtering and I just want to make uh, two points of clarification here because I think I might have missed out something in the last video first is that this SIJ uh, this is actually what does it represent it's a uh, Normally, we write Sij as half of this, as half of this, right? But I uh, want you to know, um, for calculation of this uh, um, kinematic uh, subgrid's uh, um, viscosity, we need to use the filtered bits of the velocities here inside our, our modeling uh, coefficients here, and not the full the full actual velocity of the thing because we are not able to calculate any bit of that so we'll need to always use the filtered parts second of all um, I said that uh, this this uh, tau ij minus this tau kk blah 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 equals to this and I said that tau aj equals to uh, this over here now that is not exactly complete uh, and um, there's actually one more term that needs to be considered here. So what is that term? Uh, I'll continue like right now. So, okay. Now we have already uh, discussed previously that this tau ij, this subgrid stress tensor, this subgrid tensor is equals to this Reynolds subgrid tensor, which is this part, the part with the unfiltered or subgrid velocities and the cross stress tensor term which is the part between the filtered and non-filtered uh, velocity parts. Okay? So if we were to expand, let's say, this out, okay, let's go back and make one more adjustment. There needs to be one more adjustment. Okay, so this is uh, what we have here. And we basically expanded this convection term into these four terms over here okay so we have these four terms over here okay and okay the weight yeah and then we will just apply this del by del xj to all of this okay all right and then this will be our Reynolds stress terms and then uh, our cross stress terms. Now, problem is we can't calculate this term directly because we kind of need to put a filter on it. What we actually want, is for the following. We want this term over here to just be uiuj without that filter on top okay then we'll just plus dot 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 somewhere here okay what is this dot 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 what is this difference between this term and this term okay so that is actually known that is actually known as the uh, Leonard's stress yeah what is the difference between this and this this is actually known as the Leonard's stress uh, tensor, okay, or Le Leonard's decomposition. So this one will be found here. You find it in the filtered governing equations at this part. So you'll see that, uh, okay, there's a difference between this term and this term, and that's actually the Leonard's term, okay? Now, so uh, this is also known as Leonard's decomposition because having a term in this term uh, it doesn't allow us to solve for the Navier-Stokes equations using like CF decoder or what not what have you so actually we need to do one more decomposition okay so this term is equals to this term plus L i j okay L i j is called the Leonard tensor. OK, 
okay so lij okay if you just rearrange the equations it's just this big part minus this part and this represents interaction between large or filtered scales okay so remember this uh, Reynolds subgrid tensor is interaction in the subgrid scales this one is the interaction between the subgrid scale and the large scale this one is the interaction between the large scale and the large scale it's uh, just that simple so I will need to actually uh, get this thing out this dot 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 here okay what is this dot 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 um, We'll just we'll just put this we'll just put this bit here. Okay. Alright. Okay, so um, we'll have this Lij here, which we will just uh, put it to this side. Okay, along with all the other residue uh, stress terms. And remember, this is the cross stress term, and that's the Raynaud stress term. So C, I J will be here, and R I J will be here. Remember what each of these actually represent. So we need to kind of edit. We need to, okay, this one I should put it up here. Okay. To model all of these three stresses together and okay we we define okay how ij r is equals to these three terms and this is equals to I will just make it different. Uh, tau ij over here plus lij. And over here, the term needs to be called tau ij r instead of uh, tau ij, just to avoid the confusion. So all of this, I need to put it over here. So recall, yes, this is how we actually model our Smagorinsky uh, model. We use a Smagorinsky model to model this tau ijr. Okay, not exactly tau ijr. This is the deviatroid part of tau ijr. What does deviatroid means? Okay, um, deviatroid. Yes, this is where we get it. deviatroid stress from continuummechanics.org. So. Take for example, okay, take for example, you have a box here, a control volume, and you have some stresses acting on each of them, right? So you submerge this under some fluid or some water, and there will be some normal stresses uh, acting on this box, so to speak, a control volume, right? Um, but normally this this uh, total stress it will be a contribution of the pressure plus some other thing okay so the total stress let's say you are experiencing i mean a, a, a control volume would experience is like you know some of the stresses that can be caused by okay some uh some dynamic pressure for example which is converted into some fluid pressure okay something like that so um, so we are not interested so much in the pressure stresses but we are interested in the other stresses that cause deformation on this uh, we are not so interested in the pressure part we are interested in the other parts for example because there's fluid flowing in and out or flowing past it uh, so that's what we are more interested in and 
So we want to, we are interested in the part without the pressure. So we were interested in this green sigma here. And this green sigma equals to the total, total, let's say normal stress minus the pressure. And this is called the deviatoric stress. Deviatoric stress. Okay? So the deviatoric stress is this. So we can kind of understand it roughly like so. Okay. So we model the deviatoric sma, uh, stresses, uh, subgrid stresses, subgrid stresses, or residual stresses with the Smagorinsky model. Uh, subgrid viscosity model right so that's how we that's how we go about our business this is the deviatoric part of the stress okay so this is a revision or rather doing it in more in-depth detail noting that sij has to be part has to be calculated using the filtered velocities not the normal velocities right so this yeah this is the part where we model it and so, yeah, this is how we model our stresses. And the result is that, okay, the result is we get this. Okay, so we just move it to the other side so we have a subtraction. And then uh, we, we put this in, okay. We'll get this in here. All right, and this is how we model our stresses. Okay, so the, the extra little velocity comes in here and we'll have, uh, yeah, I need to get rid of this. Okay. All right, I think I missed out a density term somewhere there. Yeah, okay, I think I missed out a density term. Okay, because uh, all of these are not uh, without the density terms. So actually, we'll need to multiply the row into this. Then we can say, yeah, this is actually the... Uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, yes, I think I missed the density because all of these are divided by density by default. This one has to have density inside or included. So uh, I will need to change a few things over here being one of them. Okay. And that's that's how we, we model it. Okay. Anyway, going back, going back here. Uh, we have this SIJ here, and yeah, that's how we roll. Uh, we didn't copy and paste it into here, all the, the, the subgrid uh, stress, the tau notation. So no need to worry. This is right. Okay. Hopefully I, I, I got all, all the things out. So anyway, uh, if we were to get the SIJ in here, so we'll just do the following. And that's how we get it done. Okay. So, uh, if we were to combine these two terms on the left, we'll get something very familiar, which is our you no know, filtered or modeled equations. That's how we get this. Okay. So this is how we get our small Gorensky model, right? So just to recap, the cross-stress tensor talks about the large and small scale interaction or the unfiltered scale. The, uh, the subgrid tensor is uh, dealing with the small scale only. And um, this process of uh, separating it into the large and small scales, 
this thing here is called double decomposition okay this is called double decomposition over here so yeah this this is called double decomposition and if you want to include that last little Lennart's term there okay if you want to include this last Lennart's term there okay so you need to put an additional line there and that is just the ui uj line so plus l i j here this will be c i j this is r i j so the following is known as triple decomposition or Lennertz decomposition Okay, so this makes it kind of solvable. All right. So that that's uh, that's what we what Leonard's decomposition is all about, and yeah. So now, now we have this. Okay, we, okay. Now we have this. Uh, this one I can just cancel because I already just uh, did Leonard's decomposition. Now we, we need to do double filtering, which is not double decomposition, but the filtering process all over again. Why do we want to do that? It's because we want to have, you know, uh, we want to have uh, a coefficient that can help us describe this new SGS. Okay, so the, the fact is we'll need to uh, filter everything again. So we need to do a second round of filtering to determine CD or CD equals CS squared right we wanted we wanted a way to determine this C Smagorinsky right a C Smagorinsky or I just use CD for short I think D stands for dynamic there I think so uh, yeah but anyway uh, we'll need to filter again so that we can try and get uh, some expression for CD. CD. This all this is known as test filtering. Okay, the second round of filtering. So I will get into that now, and a little bit of that now, and more in the next video. So let's let's just apply the filter to the whole thing first. And it's going to get a little bit repetitive, but yeah. Okay, and here we won't use the bar, we'll use tilde. We'll use tilde across everything. Okay, okay. The, the the Microsoft equation and the tilde doesn't really stretch very far. It's supposed to stretch across all the terms here. Okay, so now we can bring this in. Some of this summation, uh, the linearity thing, uh, is fine. Oh yeah, just to note the second round of filtering, the filter, filter width of this test filter. Okay, delta tilde equals to 2 delta okay so this is the test filter length it should be generally bigger than the original filter length you gave uh, because we wanted to you know, further separate out further separate out this part this medium part so this filtering is to help us get the medium part so that we can try and guess this okay so the second filter is a bigger filter it's a test filter Okay, let me keep copying. Why do I keep copying and pasting it? Okay, so let's let's do it one at a time. So I'm gonna skip a few steps, alright, since we're already quite familiar with filtering. So we know that the summation and differentiation rule or the bringing the differential operator inside allows us to do this. Okay, that's a wrong side. A tilde. Alright. This one also. So I'm gonna bring this out. 
I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, and I have a tilde over the inside. All right, same thing here. I'm just gonna put a tilde here because I'm gonna ignore. So this is a double filtered. And this term here, I will just apply tilde over everything inside. Okay, cause uh, yeah, cause I, I I don't want to deal with this part just yet. But obviously, this this part will need to, um, you will need to decompose it. Okay, you will need to decompose it. Triple decomposition again. All right. So again, it will it will consist of a few terms, or, or many terms in fact. Okay, so. We reference the old one. Our first round of filtering. First round of filtering. Okay. So this term will be all of this here. Okay. And this instead will be tilde. Okay, and then we'll have a tilde on this as well. And then last one is this. All right. And then of course we'll need to decompose this term as well. Okay, so you will have this term. Plus some big L term, right? Similar to the Leonard's term. Okay, except that we don't exactly call it the same term. If not, it'll be very confusing. And, and anyway, it means something a little bit different okay it means something a little bit different so we'll use a letter like L we'll use a letter like L C and R but we'll use a different letter this time so I'm gonna look for letter like symbols look for something that looks like an L so where is the L yeah okay this this one looks lap okay it's supposedly for Laplace transform but I'll just use this L here hopefully or I can use a Greek letter. Okay, Greek letter doesn't really have anything. I'll just use L. This Laplace looking thing here. Script L. IJ, which is the equivalent of the Leonard's tensor. Okay. So for our second round of filtering. Okay, we will have this LIJ here. Then we'll have this one for the cross terms. So again, we will need to use another C looking like a letter. Hopefully I can find something. Okay, this one looks decent. Okay, or maybe a script C. Okay, the script C looks good enough. And then this one will be, I can use a script R. Okay, so now we, we have something similar, you see. Um, okay, and of course, the, actually these terms here, they are actually filtered, so I need to put a bar over them. Here. Because they are, they are filtered the first time, but not filtered the second time. Okay, so by analogy, and what is the what is the decomposition? Uh, we'll need to do it like so. Okay, u bar equals to the double filtered, double filtered. 
okay okay you bar tilde tilde plus u prime bar so this is how i will notate so this is the second round of filtering this is the unfiltered part okay the second part okay so let me just uh quickly put a bar over each of this and then i'll just call it a day okay so these two will have bars over them okay so that that's it okay this is how we do a so-called second round of filtering all right and then we will have this uh, similar Leonard's terms, the cross term and the Reynolds term again, but these are for different scales. So I'll use a different notation this time. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Uh, hopefully this brings some clarity into what double filtering is all about and the Leonard's uh, decomposition. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.